How is it possible to get a steel beam which runs the length of this house inserted with all these props in the way? If you've been following my earlier videos, you'll have seen the steps I took to design and build a typical rear house extension and here I'll take you through my process from design through to installation for the steelwork because you can do this yourself too. Uh, here we have the wall suspended with acro props and needles ready for the beam to be put in and you might think that this is a task that looks daunting and is only for the professionals but it's actually really straightforward and will save you a load of cash if you do it yourself and see my other video for how you can indeed get hold of some very basic tools and do it all yourself. Now for the steelwork, first I sent some basic design ideas to a structural engineer. Sizes the engineer has specified, I was able to draw it out in 3D elements in no time at all, which enabled me to get a much better understanding as well as having a much clearer set of information to send to my steel fabricator in order to price it for me. I don't know why engineers can't provide this type of information uh, because it would make everybody's life a lot easier. You can see the engineer has decided the existing house walls are not strong enough as I have a large glazed opening. We also have some steel to create a big lintel over what will be the patio doors, the sliding patio doors. Um, which is what this smaller goalpost arrangement is in the new build part of the extension. The steel columns are bolted into the concrete foundations with what we call resin anchor bolts. We just drill some holes, put the bolts in and inject some resin. You can get these from places like Screwfix. If you want to see how I poured these concrete foundations, I'll leave a link to how I did it here. I made some videos about that, so hopefully that will be helpful to you as well. And the other advantage of creating these quick drawings, I'm using a free software called SketchUp, is that I can see all the issues way before I'm on site. And here it's clear that there's no way the engineer's design can work it's impossible to get the beam in with the props in the way. So I had to go back to my engineer and politely ask them to redesign the beam so it comes in three parts bolted together on site. Therefore, it will be a manageable size for us to maneuver between the props. This type of connection where we split the beam into a number of parts, a splice and in the steel beams case, what we do is we cut the beam into three and then we use a flat plate of steel with some bolt holes in it and these uh, bolt into the flange of the, the vertical flange of the eye section and um, we bolt these plates on site and that makes the beam far more manageable. The sketch were sent again to the steel fabricator and we were able to get all this fabricated as a kit of parts prior to starting on site. And if you watch my videos you'll know I like to build and manage as much as I can myself but for steel I'll always get the fabricator to do the site sizing. Once I've accepted their price and paid the deposit they will come out and site check everything before the cutting of the beams and fabrication of the plates. Here he's taking the dimensions uh, he needs now that I've done the demolitions and with this information he'll go back to the workshop and will manufacture to these sizes. So any mistakes in measuring or discrepancies will be his responsibility therefore, plus they know what they're looking for in terms of tolerances. In simple terms uh, we call it, it's, it's basically accuracy. In the next video I will show you how I actually installed all of this steel work and uh, a few ups and downs on the process. I'll let you see a time lapse of it but in the meantime it would help me if you gave me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you the next time.